<laughs> yeah, we're recording. <laughs> off thank you for coming here and sitting down with me i yeah. really appreciate it thank you for having me of course <laughs> so we just wrapped up 2017 right but mm -hmm. i feel like 2017 was your year <laughs> you accomplished so much and one of the things that really stood out to me it was kind of hard to choose mm -hmm. was um your shoot with lala anthony she did uh right she did a um clothing line for lord and taylor mm -hmm. right yeah, so tell me about all of that, how that came about, and just your experience. So, the experience was amazing. So, my agent reached out to me and said that Lala Anthony was having a casting, so I was like, I'm there. Yeah. Like, I have to be there. Um, and so, when I went to the casting, I was nervous, of course, um, but I remember I arrived, like, 20 minutes early just so I could be, like, the first one there. Like, I wanted to make a impression um, with the whole brand and when I got chosen I was literally in tears I think my agent told me on the bus ride back the same day so when you have moments like that in your mm -hmm. career do you feel like you know it kind of reaffirms that this is your purpose you know that you're really on the track of doing what you're supposed to be doing it does when stuff like that happens it's kind of like okay I yeah. know that I'm doing something right. Right. So it was it was amazing. So. Yeah, congratulations to you Thank on you. that. <laughs> so when would you say that you first knew that you wanted to become a model? Like what was that defining moment for you? Um, I started modeling when I was in like the eighth grade. But it wasn't until twenty thirteen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that I got signed. Okay. Um, so throughout that period I was just doing photo shoots and I was just kinda testing the waters and seeing if this is something that I really love and I grew to actually love it and I wanted to make it into my career. So would you say that you felt like your dream was ever like intimidating just because you know being a model is huge yeah you know and then whenever you see models it's kind of like in the big screen on big platforms mm -hmm. so were you ever did you ever have moments where you kind of like doubted like you know do i really want to do this am i intimidated by this like, yeah i've definitely doubted like my career yeah. and i say that that happened when i was cyber bullied okay i kind of felt like maybe this is something that I shouldn't do. Because people can be mean. People were so <laughs> mean. Like they were calling me fat. They oh, were saying no. that I shouldn't be a model and that I should find like a different career field. Um, so that definitely yeah. was one moment in my life where I was just like, okay. It's what made you be like, no, I'm still gonna be a model. It took time for me to just be by myself. I prayed a lot. Um, and I will always ask God for like signs, like if this is for me, like send me a sign. And when he sent me the sign, which was like me doing like this huge photo shoot for Atasha Jordan, she's a photographer. Oh cool. That was kind of like my sign where I was like, okay, uh, this, this is, is it. This is what you're doing. <laughs> and I kind of just had to pick myself up and say, you know, forget what people think. Right. Like people are going to talk about you regardless. Definitely. Um, so I just had to push past that and just pick myself up and say if I'm gonna do it I have to do it regardless of what people think of me and what people say about me so now you actually have the opportunity to inspire other models yeah right? with your to be a model class yeah you you're on your second one yes I um, just finished my so tell me how one. you got into that so the motivation behind that was I really wanted to give people what I didn't have. So when I was starting, I didn't have anyone to show me the ropes, anyone to tell me how to get started. Really? I didn't know anything. I kind of just jumped in <laughs> head first. Sometimes that's how you have to yeah. do <laughs> But I wanted to really give models, aspiring models, sign models, models of all shapes and sizes that opportunity to learn what it takes and how to actually get started um, in modeling. So yeah. I did my Baltimore class in October of 2017 and then I just did my DC class this past Saturday, I wanna say. Last Saturday, the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been amazing, it has. I definitely wanna keep traveling and just keep inspiring women that they can actually do it. That is so cool. Do you feel like it's a fulfilling moment for you to it have is. people be like, you know, you really helped me? Yes, yeah. because honestly, that's something that I'm very passionate about is helping others. Like, 
I'm always in the community helping people. I'm always helping those less fortunate. And I'm always giving back to models that actually want to get in the industry. So it's definitely just all full circle. So when I have people show up to classes and like when they really learn something, I'm just like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be yeah. doing. <laughs> and I do love that about you because I do think that that's really important mm -hmm. to be able to give back, you know, because if we're fortunate with success and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. not everybody is blessed to be able right. to have these opportunities. You know, it just, it's kind of works out that way sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I commend people who have platforms like this and yeah. then they're still willing to give back and inspire yes. and stuff like that. So being that you're a plus size model, right? And then you're also a black woman. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have to work three times as hard because just being anybody, a black man, a black woman, they say you have to work twice as hard to get anywhere in life. Absolutely. As a black woman, we are already a double minority because we're black and then because we are a woman. Um, but you still have to work twice as hard in the industry. And I always tell like my attendees that as well, like just because you're a model doesn't mean that these different stigmatisms and discrimination or prejudice, whatever it is, doesn't exist in the industry. Yeah. So I still have to work twice as hard to, you know, get jobs that I want. Right. Um, so it's just, it's a lot right. behind it. Because I was actually just watching uh, America. You just mentioned America's Not Yeah. Show. And Tyra's back, so I'm like super excited. Yes. Um, so I was watching that, I want to say a couple nights ago, and the judge, Ashley Graham, she's mm -hmm. on there, and she was talking to this other plus size model, and she was saying how, you know, you have to come hard. Yeah. Like, you can't just be walking into a room and thinking like, oh, you're pretty or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. you have to come like harder than a lot of people. Yes, yeah. yep, you do, because a lot of the times, you know... You'll get, like, overlooked, which is so sad to say, but you have to back up, like, your looks with talent. Yeah. You know, because I feel like no matter how pretty you are, how gorgeous you may look, how long your hair is, whatever it is, exactly. your talent is something that they can't deny you of, so... I, every day I'm just working to be like a better model and try to put my best foot forward. Oh, that's very true, yes. So what do you, what would you say keeps you going every day? Like what's that one thing that makes you get up in the morning and be like, I'm going to keep doing this? Hmm, my mom. Okay, I love, that's like I'm like a mama's girl. I love Me my mom. Too. I just really want to be in a position where she doesn't have to worry about a thing. Like... Ever since day one, she has inspired me. She has pushed me in ways that I just could not imagine. And she's been there when nobody else has. Yeah. So she is the reason behind everything that I do. Um, I just want to make her proud. Yeah. And that's, that's it's always good to know, like, your mom is there, like somebody who you know from. Yes. You, when you have people who are acting crazy, saying mean stuff. So yes. It is all amazing. for mama. <laughs> What has this entire journey been like for you being signed to Dorothy Combs mm -hmm. Models? You know, what was that entire journey like? It's been life changing. Yeah. Um, I've learned so much about myself. Um, I feel like when I was just getting signed, I was so new to everything and I was just like kind of nervous, yeah. kind of. Um, and I can be really shy at times. I know it's like, <laughs> girl, you shy? Yes, I can You're be right, so I can shy. shy. <laughs> I can be so shy and I feel like I was so shy when I first started. Um, but as I got to know myself, um, learned about my passions and how I really just want to come into myself, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, I just started to evolve overall. And being signed has just opened up so many doors. Like, I don't know, like being a sign model, you get way more opportunities yeah. and way more um, just room to grow versus being like an unsigned model. Right. Um, so it's been, it's been great. I mean, do you feel like being signed boosted your confidence? Or does that not have anything to do with you? It did a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I mean, it to did. be honest, because I'm like, on the outside looking at, I feel like being signed, it kind of gives you, you know, some leverage. And so yeah. then it's like, you know, people really see the vision in me. Yes. And so then that might give you a little bit more esteem, mm -hmm. you know. I feel like people take you more serious when okay. you're signed. So in the industry, like if you're a sign model, you're kind of more like established um, and you have more of like that professionalism behind you. Right. Um, because as a unsigned model, 
you experience a lot like yeah. as an unsigned model. So things may not be as professional when you show up to photo shoots and it's just a lot. Yeah. Um, but being like a signed model, I guess it did kind of boost my car. <laughs> it did a little now bit. That you think about yeah, it. now that I think about it. <laughs> Would you say that it is a little bit more pressure being a signed model? Hmm. I don't think that I guess so, yeah. But I think it's inflicted by myself. Okay. Because I'm such a perfectionist, I feel like being a sign model, I have to work and I have to get jobs and I have to just like fulfill this yeah. this role in my head. Yeah. Um, I don't think that like anybody pressures me. I pressure myself just because I'm always pushing myself to do better. And nothing is ever good enough in my head. So like, even though people may see that I'm um, that I'm signed, that I worked with Lala, that I did this, that I did that, in my mind, I'm just starting. That is me. Yeah, Literally. I'm just starting. Yes. So I'm always so hard on myself, so hard on myself. Nothing is ever good enough. I think so. that's a good thing. Because it it's is. like, you know, you put we push ourselves to do more, yeah. we accomplish more, mm -hmm. and then we get to inspire, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that really, because I think when you get comfortable, then that becomes a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah. That is definitely, that is definitely, yeah. <laughs> So we actually both went to Howard, yeah. uh, graduated at the same time. Shout out to Howard, <laughs> shout out to HU17. <laughs> So during your time there, you got the Tom Joyner Scholarship, yes. which allowed you to go to the NAACP Awards, mm -hmm. the BET Awards. Yes. Like, what? It was... <laughs> <laughs> that moment in my life was like... It was like a God's dream. Yeah. I was, I was in heaven on earth. Um, but getting the scholarship was amazing. One, because... I didn't get too many scholarships at Howard, and my grades was on point. So I was like, what is going <laughs> on? But I actually got the scholarship because of my community service. Okay. So the way that I got the scholarship um, in Baltimore, I, me and my mom, we went to donate like hats and gloves and scarves and like canned goods to the homeless. And then I wrote about it um, in applying for the scholarship. So getting that scholarship and being able to go to like the Image Awards right. and the BET experience, it was just like, I never would have thought that all of that came from the scholarship. Right, and it because was because- they didn't mention it. Yeah. Oh, they didn't mention it at no. all. No. <laughs> and it was all because of you giving back. You didn't even know that exactly. that was gonna be a part of you getting the scholarship. Exactly. And then, so that's amazing. Was uh, what was it like being on the red carpet with all of the celebrities? And then you actually hosted Side by Side with Terrence J. Yes. What yes. was that like? <laughs> Tell me about that. Um, I was nervous, yeah. is I don't know what. Yeah. Just because in my mind, I'm like, I cannot mess this up. People are looking like <laughs> the I whole cannot, country. The whole at country you. is looking at me like I cannot mess this up. So I practiced a lot. Like in my hotel room, they'd be like, oh my God, come downstairs for a social. And this, I'm like, I'm in my room yeah. practicing. Like I cannot mess up tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but it was great. Meeting Terrence J, he was so sweet. Um, and when I was at the BET experience, meeting Rotimi and 2 Chainz, and yeah. I was like, 2 Chainz. <laughs> like, I just love all of them. Right. They were so nice. And I think like when we think of like celebrities, sometimes we think like they're like bratty or like like mean, but everyone that I met was like so nice. Yeah. Like very down to earth, and I thank God that I met the down to earth like, celebrities. Right. No, serious, because you can come across come some across a few, a, like, a, a few celebrity. better. Exactly. <laughs> know your place. Um, but yeah, it was it was such a good experience. Yeah. I wish I could go back and do it all again, but it was it was amazing. That it is was. very very amazing. Yay. So you've already started off 20, 2018, Excuse me, we're in a new year with a bang, right? Yeah. You released a hairline HD look. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, are you? I this? am. Yes. <laughs> so tell me what um, inspired you to even start and even get into the hair industry. Okay. So me and my boyfriend, who is also one of the CEOs, um, we have been always like talking about like going into like a business venture. And I've always wanted to have my own hairline, but I don't even, I've never told him about it, which was really? like, yes, it was so weird because when he said it, I was like, are you in my mind? Like, I've never really like took much initiative on it just because I didn't, I don't know. I didn't think that people, 
think people would like it. But people was, are loving it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we kind of just like had a conversation. It was like, okay, if we're gonna do this, like let's do it. Um, and HD actually stands for like Haley, and then his name starts with D, okay. which a lot of people don't know. Um, but yeah, it was it was great, like just sitting down and him being my business partner. He's very like business oriented, um, and I'm like the executor. So planning out the photo shoots and doing the launch, it was just like amazing. But it took a long time just finding like the right. Vendor right. and like making sure that everything was perfect. Okay. Um. So it was it's paying off. Do you like having a partner who knows you? You know, does that make it easier? It does. Yeah. It definitely does. Um. I feel like one of the challenges that we will face is just balancing, you know, like our relationship and right. then business. Um. Because I don't ever want us to be so captivated by all this business and then forget about like our relationship um, but we've been doing like a great job so far just like separating the two so how would you say that you guys support each other during the business side I feel like because we do everything together so I feel like you know if I'm stressed out about something he never likes to see me stressed like about anything yes, so he will like go good. miles to make sure that everything is perfect and if he's stressed out about something, I'm always there to kind of like mitigate the situation and make sure that everything is like perfect. So it's been great. Like the, the balance between how we think and how we like execute things is, is a good balance as well. So that's awesome. So yeah. um, what made you specifically get into the hair industry out of all businesses that you could have chosen? Is it because because when I think of like hair, wigs, all that, it's like bopping right now. Like yeah. People are wearing it all the time. So is that one of the reasons why you chose to go into this business? So I've always wanted to own, like in 2017, the beginning of 2017, excuse me, I told myself everything that I wear, I want to own. So this is like the first of many businesses oh, I love that I want to go Coming out with a clothing line to okay. maybe on the come up. <laughs> But I started with hair because I've always been wearing hair since like, it sounds bad, but like eighth grade. Okay. I started wearing extensions and I think I just want to have my own. I want to own what I wear. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to start with hair and then break my way to maybe clothing. Start with the hair, go down. Go down, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I really just wanted to put like money in my own pocket and stop, you know, I've I've been through so yeah, many money different in your own pocket. Yeah, you know, put it in my <laughs> own pocket. <laughs> I love that. So do you have plans of, you know, expanding the line to be sold in different stores or do you mm -hmm. want to kind of just always be the only and primary seller? Um, so I definitely want to have it in stores. I want to do like more pop-up shops. I want to really expand it. Like runway shows, like hair shows. I want to sponsor like celebrities. So I have like big goals yeah. for my hairline. Um, so yeah, I'm just riding the wave. I, but I can't wait to see where it takes yes. off. Yes. So I told you what my favorite moment of 2017 was for you. What would you say yours was? Of 2017? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, there was so much. I, <laughs> hmm. It had to be the BET experience. Okay. It was... That's a just, good one. It was so fun. Like, it was so fun. Just being on stage and interviewing. It kind of gave me, like, a newfound love for, like, hosting and stuff like that. Because I always wanted to do like hosting and like interviewing live, like on television, but I will always be so scared. Yeah. And so doing that, I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone. And I love to step out of my comfort zone. That's a big so step though. Like, it was a know, huge step. Just throw huge. It right into the car. Yeah. Like, on the BET Awards. Like that is huge. Yeah, but it was great. amazing. Yeah. So that was probably one of my favorite moments from 2017. Okay. Definitely. That's Great. I cannot wait to see what you do in 2018. Um, so I kind of want to end all of my interviews with asking you guys, like, what's a piece of advice that you would give to yourself in the past? So for you, what's one piece of advice that you would have given yourself a year ago? 
I don't know. It's so much that I would say to myself. Because we so, learned so much. Exactly. Yeah. So it would definitely be to have confidence. Um, I feel like my confidence has grown so much, but I feel like I kind of let people... I don't know, like affect my confidence at the same time um, because I care so much about like what yeah. people think of me at times, but I would tell my past self to not care what people, what anyone says about me. Um, and I would tell myself to go harder. Like even I would tell myself now to go harder um, because I always want to just keep striving and keep keep going and so great well thank you so much Haley, for yes. sitting down with me i thank appreciate you, you so much thank you for having me <laughs> of course <laughs>